so mechanical cir uh, circulatory support So mechanical circulatory support with durable ventricular assist devices um, is a rapidly evolving field. VAT provides the life therapy for patients with a decompensating heart failure. Bridge to transplantation is use of VAT to sustain the life until the donor heart becomes available. In terms of bridge to transplantation, the majority of the devices are implanted to allow the patient to survive until the donor heart becomes available. Destination therapy is a VAT which can be used as alternative to transplantation and when used with this objective it is termed as destination therapy. This happens to the patients uh, who are considered ineligible for transplantation. Destination therapy has become a more attractive option for elderly patients as durable and adverse even uh, profiles of current use of devices have improved the sustainability. Bridge to decision in the patient with acute cardiogenic shock, non-implantable VATs are frequently used to stabilize the patient and await myocardial recovery. Such patients often have a potentially reversible medical conditions that can be temporarily contraindicated for cardiac transplantation and MCS can be used as a bridge to decision. For example, the pulmonary pressures can be reduced with MCS therapy and the patient with heart failure who are considered to have permanently elevated pulmonary hypertension. Bridge to recovery, the strategy of the device implantation to promote offloading of the heart and myocardial recovery is termed as bridge to recovery. Some patients can recover sufficiently to allow explanation of the left-sided VAD. Typically, this occurs in minority of the patients. So, indications of the use are Carefully selected patient, stage D heart failure, non-curable MCS, including the use in percutaneous extra uh, corporeal VATs, durable MCS in reasoning for prolonged survival. So, the device options could be VATs of pulsatile continuous characteristic pump mechanism could be axial or centrifugal or uh, First generation pulsatile pumps, second generation continuous flow devices, and third generation are centrifugal pump. So let's talk about the first generation. VAT, the initial VATs are pulsatile positive displacement pumps, which provide a good hemodynamic uh, support, but with a limited by lack of long-term device uh, durability. First generation devices has hard uh, drive lines and were prone to infection, and they were noisy and which adversely affected patient's quality of life. More importantly, these systems require the multiple moving parts that contributed to thrombogenicity and device malfunction. These factors contributed with the limited use and the early device include the Thoratec, Paracorporeal Ventricular Assist Devices and uh, NovaCore, of which uh, one of these devices will provide more than four years of continuous circulation therapy. The use of NovaCore has been discontinued due to high rates of stroke. HeartMate 1 was the first generation device which was used as a landmark rematch trial. The second generation device are used defined by the axial pump mechanism rather than the volume displacement and continuous rather than pulsatile flow. And the, these devices were more durable, quieter, and smaller, including the smaller drive lines that lower the rate of infections. The HeartMate 2 as a technology uh, evolved the smaller second generation HeartMate device and the axial flow are featured in flow and outflow cannulas without valves eliminating the reservoir necessary for the pulsatile pumps. Pumps weigh 350 grams. Pumps can degenerate. Uh, 10 mils at the pressure of 100 mils and the device has shown to be proven excellent hemodynamic support in patients awaiting the heart transplantation. The heart made if trial showed that the heart made 2 was associated with increased probability 2 year survival intermax uh, interagency registry for mechanically assisted circulation support analysis showed that the overall survival of 80% in one year and 69% in two years. Pump thrombosis uh, 
was uh, reported in the continuous axial flow pump is positioned with the left ventricle reducing the risk of infection. The third generation devices, the technological advancement in design and mechanism has led to the third generation MCS devices that are defined with centrifugal pumps anticipated durability 5 to 10 years and the device have become smaller, easier to implant and have optimized flow that minimizes the risk of thrombosis and hemolysis. Hardware, this device contains a small continuous centrifugal pump that allows for implantation in the pericardial space. It has only um, one moving part, the impeller, and no mechanical bearings, and it weighs um, 145 grams as impeller and can generate up to 10 mils. And it has been approved as a bridge to heart transplantation based on the result with the uh, multi center prospective advanced BTT trial. The hardware is approved by destination therapy based on the randomized post operative multi center non-inferiority endurance uh, trial. Third generation of the heart made device was a magnetically leviated centrifugal flow pump and weighs 240 grams and inserted uh, into the apex of the left ventricle and this can generate up to 10 mils of flow compared with the heart made 2 and third generation devices result in the fewer strokes absolute reduction in the pump thrombosis translating into 150 15% reduction in the reoperation rate for devices and malfunction. By when by biventricular support, the patient have been treated with implanted VAT on both sides in biventricular supports. And while this is a different uh, label use, it is performed by HeartMate 2, HeartMate 3, and HVAT. Other device options for the patient with biventricular failure include the thoracic PVAD and total artificial heart. Other post-operative conditions, the patient with any stage um, heart failure evaluated by multidisciplinary team to determine the transplant eligibility. Intraoperative consideration at the time of LVAD implantation, the additional cardiac procedures should be addressed. Aortic regurgitation must be corrected to prevent the reversal of flow. Postoperative consideration include management of the adu adequate nutrition support and anticoagulation. And right-sided failure occur in about 20% of the patient with LVAD insertion. Early signs include elevated central venous pressure, gastrointestinal bleeding is common complication of the VAD implantation. Hemolysis is a potential indicator for device malfunction and long-term care, the rapid advancement of MCS technologies has uh, enabled improved outcome and lower device associated complications. Thank you.